Good day everyone and welcome to episode 2 of the Mahabharata as a podcast. In this podcast, we explore each and every chapter of the great Mahabharata epic. If you are interested in knowing more about the text and its composition and history, please go back to episode 1. So, in episode 2, we will discuss the first section of the Mahabharata story. This section is titled Anukamaranika Parva and is part of the larger Adi Parva. Mahabharata is divided into main parvas and or volumes and sub parvas or sections. Each main parva has many sub parvas just as each volume of a book can have many sections. Please see episode description to understand the classification. And finally for the purpose of this podcast I have not read the story verbatim rather i have shortened the dialogues to suit the contemporary conversation style while doing my best to retain the original meaning please feel free to drop a comment or email me at mahabharataasas@outlook.com for any feedback or comment please like subscribe and share if you find this podcast useful This section of Saparva provides a short summary of the story and scholars believe that it is a letter interpolation in the text. So without a moment's delay, let's begin. The starting scene is a large congregation of various sages who have come to attend the ceremony organized by a king. A sage by the name of Ugar Sharva walks into the ceremony and greets other sages. "Welcome, Sauti. Where have you been and what have you been up to?" asks one of the sages to Ugar Sharva. Sage Ugar Sharva was son of a chariot driver or a sooth and therefore was also famous by the name of Soti. My respected sages, please accept my greetings once again. You are all knowing, replies Soti. Sages smile. I have been out attending a very large snake sacrifice organized by King Janmeja to avenge death of his father. Sages listen attentively. Seeing no counter question, Sothi continues. In that sacrifice, I heard a story that was recited by another sage who is a student of Vedavyas. I was so deeply moved by the story and the places described in it that I wanted to go and see those places myself. So since the conclusion of the sacrifice, I have been wandering from place to place exploring those places. Any special place you visited, Sothi? asks one of the sages yes my lords all of those places samant panchaka is the best replies sothi so if you're so impressed by the story would you also please share the story with us you are a learned sage if you are so deeply moved by the story there must be something in it asks the oldest of the sages of course my lords replies sothi Perhaps customary to that time and space, Sothi starts the story not with the story itself, but with the brief description of the creation events, including how universe came to be, and how different gods came about, including the creation of various religious texts and branches of knowledge. Surely the learned sage Vedavyasa knew of this knowledge of creation, and he was the one who composed this story, which many know by the name of Mahabharata. I heard that story at the snake sacrifice continues Sothi Having heard that story resumes Sothi after a brief pause I must say that this is the culmination of the entire religious knowledge all the behaviors and emotions that one can possibly conceive of are all present in this you can see hint of all the vedas vedangas vedantas upanishad dharma shastra smriti puranas and the religious texts It's a complete manual of what to do and what not to do. Sothi sees the tension rising but does not stop. One thing I must add before I begin is that the composer of the story itself, the great sage Ved Vyasa, also played a key part in the story itself for without him the story would wouldn't have transpired. How so? asks a sage. Sage Ved Vyasa was son of Satyavati and Rishi Parashara. born before satyavati's marriage to the king of hastinapur shantanu satyavati bears two sons to the king by the name of vichitravirya and chitrangada chitrangada is killed by the nagas at an early age and vichitravirya succumbs to illness 
Although Vichitravidya is married, he never begets any offspring. What a tragedy! Sauti is interrupted by another sage. Yes, my lords, but things get better now. Under the tradition of Niyoga, a sage can act as a surrogate father if absolutely needed. So Satyavati requests his son before marriage, Ved Vyasa, to help. Ved Vyasa would stay with the widowed wives of Vichitravirya until they give birth and thereafter retire to his hermitage. And as tradition goes, he will have no connection with the sons born. As so it happens, three sons are born out of the Niyoga. One each to the two wives and one to a maid who voluntarily chooses to bear the son under the Niyoga tradition. So the kingdom is back on track, I suppose, says one of the sages. I wish that was the case. The eldest of the three sons, Dhritarashtra, is born blind. The second one is Pandu, but is slightly weaker. The third one named Vidra is very intelligent. However, Vidra cannot be the king as he was born out of a maid servant. Three brothers grow together and when time comes, Pandu, the second son, ascends to the throne and becomes king of Hastanapur. Dhritarashtra, due to his blindness, becomes ineligible for the position. The sage narrates the story very quickly and stops at the conclusion of the war between sons of Dhritarashtra and Pandu, stopping only at the major incidents. This is such a sad state of affairs, sighs one of the sages. The brothers engaged in such a bloody war that wiped off not just their clan but almost all the kings of Bharat. Yes, my lords, replies Sati. Dhritarashtra was extremely depressed after he heard that all his sons and grandsons were killed in the war. Sati narrates the conversation between King Dhritarashtra and his chariot driver Sanjaya as King Dhritarashtra mounts the loss of his sons. So hearing this conversation that you just described, Sati, remarks one of the sages, it appears that King Dhritarashtra acknowledges that he and his sons were on the wrong side of the history and whatever happened was destined to happen. Yes, my lords, replies Sati. Sanjaya consoles the mourning father and the king. He gives many examples of the great kings of the past and other great personalities who have died in the past. He says to King Dhritarashtra that his sons were wicked and it was their karma that led them to this state. This is therefore no point mourning what was destined to happen, recounts Sati. There is a long silence in the congregation. Respected sages, continues Sati, clearing his throat. I just described to you the story in its summary form. It is a very long story and due to its greatness, it has assumed the status of Itihasa. In my opinion, says Sati, Vedas should be supported by Itihasa because Itihasas, which are stories from the past, help understand the practical implication of some or all aspects of the Vedas in related literature. This Itihasa of Mahabharata is a special one. There are no right or wrong, good or bad or heroes or villains in this. You learn great lessons from the worst of the characters on how one should behave in certain circumstances. Whereas sometimes best of the characters display a very repulsive behavior. All other sages nod in agreement. So this parva ends here. Overall this parva or section provides a very quick summary of what transpired in the actual Mahabharata story. If you read this chapter, you will know that there is a lot of digression and uneven focus on some parts of the story. For example, the summary of the main story is much shorter than the conversation between Sanjaya and Dhritarashtra. In my opinion, this has to do with the time and space in which this story is being narrated. The scene set at the start of this chapter is that of a congregation where different sages and priests are having a conversation. Sages and priests, by their very nature, love to debate on moral and ethical issues. More than ethics, Indian religious tradition is focused on different mental states such as happiness, anger and stress that result from different choices or karmas. 
The conversation between Sanjay and Dhritarashtra provides ample examples of different choices that Dhritarashtra made that resulted in the war and eventually suffering. Response from Sanjay is also specifically highlighted because that response bring to light two main points. Certainty of the death when he recounts the kings that existed in ancient times. They were very great kings but they also died. And the second point is karma as you sow so shall you reap eventually these two fundamental points that sanjay alludes to i e certainty of death and karma become the foundation stones of the discourse between lord krishna and arjuna as we know with that we will end this episode here in next episode we will cover the second sub parva in the adi parva called parva samgrah parva until then goodbye and take care